Hello and welcome to Eternal Spirit and I'm really pleased to be back here again today because as you know Paul Salmon and hello and welcome hello Paul. Again. <laughs> yes, really lovely to have you here. Paul um, runs, uh, he is a presenter of Eternal Spirit but we thought, do you know, Paul is a really interesting man. He's a medium and very involved with spirituality and a local man as well. And I thought it'd be really good to interview Paul, just to see about Paul. Paul interviews everybody else. Let's find out about Paul. I thought that would take one program. We're on our fourth program today. I think it might be our last. I think it might be our last time. <laughs> oh, and I shall be disappointed. But we've got a really interesting, good program for you today. We're going to be talking about what Paul calls rescue work. I thought it was called exorcism, but we're going to talk about that a bit later. We're also going to look at poetry that, that, that Paul does um, write, and it's very relevant poetry. There's a particular poem I'm going to start with, which uh, I'm sure Paul will talk about afterwards. So if I may, I'll start with that and see what you think. Thank you. Now this is a poem uh, about Paul's fear of dying. I had panic attacks for 30 years. My heart missed a beat. I was out of breath. I had panic attacks, jumped out of bed, covered in sweat with the fear of death. 30 years with the fear of dying. 30 years of living a lie. 30 years of inwardly suffering. Then I found out we simply don't die. I speak from truth as I have lived it. I speak from truth as I've been shown. No need to fear. No such thing as dying. No need to fear. You're not on your own. That's a really hopeful poem. Yeah, I like to give hope, Maureen. That's part of my job. Right, and that's hope. lovely. Knowledge, actually, you know, but <clears throat> knowledge as far as I'm concerned. So where did that come from? It says 30 years of fear yeah. of dying. I remember actually very clearly, I, was, well, I remember what happened, I was about four or five, and I'm not sure which one, five I think, that I was in bed one evening and I began to just think, oh my God, I'm going to die one day. Good grief. And this is at five years old. Gosh. And panic attacks set in, I'd wake up in my sleep, finding myself out of breath, my chest heaving, you know, fluttering, Gosh. sweating. Think I'm going to die, going to die, and um, it wasn't until I went to spiritualist church. I think I mentioned briefly before. Yes. Thirty years later, hmm. um, finding out we don't die, and I just want to pass on my knowledge now if I can. But that that poem, I was in bed just dozing off, and I heard the first line from somewhere. You heard it. I heard it or I felt it and yeah. I had to get I wasn't consciously thinking about writing a poem. I thought, oh, I've got to write something down. So I just wrote it down in like five minutes or so. Gosh. <clears throat> it's a kind of a rhyming poem. I don't even read poetry. It doesn't <laughs> do anything for me actually. Mm. Um, but then gradually I mean for what what one one instance I tell you, I was in bed one evening about I had Ten, half ten at night. I had another word, another line of a poem, what sounded like a poem. So I got up and wrote it down. And within five or ten minutes, I had another poem. Went back to bed and, and I heard another line. Got up and wrote it down. And I thought, oh, that's good. Then a fourth, then a fifth. And I had these poems. <laughs> I mean, Goodness. Down. The first line I heard... But from then on, I just felt inspired to write them. Do you know what? It's three o'clock in the morning <gasps> and I was still writing. Gosh. And I had to say to someone, look, please leave me alone. I want to get some sleep. And Do you know that, where that came from? Do you know who? Well, I, know who? It, it, I don't know who or what, but I know it came from someone yeah. or somewhere. Um, but it happened. I was driving my boys to school 
a couple of years ago and I got a poem in my head. I literally had to pull the car over. I said, give me a pen. So they oh. gave me a pen. And I had an old shopping receipt. So I, I pulled over and wrote this poem down with my two boys <laughs> wanting to go to school. So I took them to school, got home, wrote it down, typed it up, you know. I, I, have you got to do it? I mean, is there something making I, you I, do it? I mean, Not necessarily. I can ignore it, hmm. but it's too good to ignore. Yes. I'm not saying my poems are good. Um, well, I think they are. Oh, they? thanks. But and they rhyme. <laughs> yeah, but they rhyme. I mean, poetry's not meant to rhyme, is it? Or, or yes, it's different, different types. Different types of poetry. But, I mean, uh, you're, not, you're not a poet. No, you're I'm not. You're not somebody that's ever... Trying to be a poet either. Yeah. <laughs> but I just feel inspired. Um, not all the time. It's stopped now because I've said, look, can you stop it? And, and they listen to you, do they? Well, someone does. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Have you written many? I've got about a hundred or so. <gasps> Gosh. They're not all typed up yet. No. I just like scribble down on you know, bits of paper I find at the time. Will um, you do something with them, do you think? Because it sounds like a book. It, it sounds does. like you could put it well, all I'm together. Well, write, I'm, I'm writing a book about my life, purely to hand down to my family, oh. sort of to leave them something. Yes. But someone once mentioned, well, I guess it published... Yeah. So I might actually do that. I might, I may actually put the poems, insert some poems in the book. Yes. I'm not sure yet. The, 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 the two that we've got today, we've got two poems today, yeah. and they're very relevant. But I don't feel they're all about me, you know, I feel that is. Mm. But, um, but it's true. That's what I've had to put up with. <laughs> so, so you can be called at any time. Yeah, so you can drive into school or... Goodness. Odd occasions I won't go into, but yes, yeah. Does it get very crowded in there sometimes? I imagine it could if I don't release it, if I don't get things off my chest or write it down. So mm. yeah, I've, I've got bits of paper all over the place. So, really? Yeah. So so do you feel that you're constantly being called and talked to? Um, no, not not with poetry because they have stopped it for now, or mm. I've asked them to stop. Um, but with other things. Do you find no, that... No, other thing, I'm quite disciplined where I, I switch on or switch off. But like I said before, hmm. now and again, they're a bit cheeky. I do <laughs> poke me if I, they need something said to someone. Well, I, I, I would have said that your, your, your poem about dying will give a lot of people hope. I, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to meet others who had the same fear as I had to help hmm. them. But where are they? I don't think there's any groups, are there? For you have Alcoholics <laughs> Anonymous. Yes. I where, don't know. Where do you go if you've got this fear? But, but it, it may not be as strong a fear as you've got, mm. but everybody <clears throat> at some point maybe has a bit of a fear of dying. Well, I think it's something you wonder, uh, or wonderment. I think if I had it, happens. surely there's others out there. Yes. It must as well. Yes. Yeah. And I just well, perhaps, perhaps if, if, if this is something that worries you, you'd like to contact us. We would love to hear from you. And I'm sure Paul would as well. Mm. Yes. So perhaps some, something will good come will come out of the poem. Who knows? Yes. Well, I should know. I'm psychic, but I don't. <laughs> An honest psychic. I think that's pretty good stuff. Let's, do you yeah. know what? Now you mentioned it. There's no point not being honest. Mm. I try not to have an ego. I love the work. Um, but it's thousands of people like me doing it anyway, you know. Mm. Um, but we're all a bit different. But, yeah, there are, and some people, don't, I mean, I don't mind being interviewed, and because I've got my own show anyway, which yeah. is coming up, but some prefer not to be, you know, and, mm. you know, you could pass people in the street, they may be mediums or psychics, you just don't know. But we've, I think we've all got hidden talents. Yes. You know, we've yeah. all got things we don't, you know. But I think you give a lot of comfort to people, if you're worried, and especially family that that have passed over. Mm. It's always nice to know that you haven't totally lost them. Well, no, that's what we're here. That's what medium's all about, mediumship, to pass on knowledge of life after life. Mm. Yes. No, I, I, yeah. I think that's great. Mm. I mean, I used to go to Church of England a bit, but I came out feeling empty. Mm. I couldn't sing. <laughs> I thought, well, I can read the Bible at home. Mm. But when I first went to a spiritualist church, I came out <gasps> enlightened. Right. You know, and, and I mean, people do get enlightened at 
different churches and what have you. But Are there many spiritual churches in, uh, around here? Around here, there's quite a lot. Is there? Yeah. Okay. So all around the country, there's quite a there's lot. Quite <laughs> even more. It's a lot. But, but they take p place in like village halls or... Oh, I see. They don't have homes. their own church. Some okay. do, but they may look like a community centre, you know. And, and is that where you work from mainly? or? Um, I, I work in some purpose-built churches which have a platform, a rostrum. Mm. Some hire the hall in like a Red Cross hall mm. or village hall or places that look like a home, you know. Right, right. So you um, work anywhere. <laughs> we, could, we could have a church here. Mm. It's a meeting place in God's name, you know. Mm. That's all okay. it is. Okay. Oh, that's good. Thank you. And before we get on to the bit that I want to talk about, which mm. is your rescue work, mm. we've got another orb, haven't we? You know we did orbs last week, which are fascinating. We've got one more that Paul has sent me that we do need to talk about, don't we? If you think so. I think so. It's one you picked out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, you'll have to explain right. what is special about this orb. If you can see it in the top of the, above um, Paul's head, <clears throat> um, at the top of right. the screen, okay. there's a huge orb there, isn't it? I, this is my little meeting place with my family sometimes. So I go and meditate on my garden bench. Your family, your, your... Well, my family's passed on. And your passed on my family. My guides and friends, I just meditate in the daytime, all night. This occasion, I, I, I had the camera with me. My son came up the garden. And I mm. said, hang on, let's take a photo of each other. So he took this one of me. And, I mean, he's got the gift of taking photographs of orbs and what have you. All right. And this one's different to other ones I've taken before. And okay. as you can see, I don't know if you can see at home... That's quite empty. There's nothing solid or tangible inside the orb. It's like blank. And most of them are filled. Mo mo except the pure white ones. Okay, but this one's not filled. There's no because you solid can see through right. it. Have you got any idea what that could be? The meaning of it. No. As Have you? As, as far as I'm concerned, mm. I'm still here. I'm on the earth. Yeah. That's what I believe, anyway. That's my higher self. I haven't passed on yet. Hence, it's not full up. Help, hence, it's not a solid orb. Well, it doesn't have your spirit yeah, it in it. It doesn't have my spirit. My spirit is, or my soul, or whatever you want to call it, my life force is within that body. Good grief. Well, why, why would it be here now? Well, I suppose it has to be somewhere. Well, it could be a higher self, a self, a self conscience, you know. Um, so when it, I pass on, that would be solid, I believe. But that's just well, me. Could that be because you're a medium? Be be no, because no, no, you've uh, opened up more. No, not at all. No. My son just ha happened to catch her. Me at that time. Goodness. That's so, what I believe. So does does everybody have their? Yeah, we've all got those. I believe. We've all got our orbs are there ready. <laughs> oh, a <laughs> higher self, if you want to call it. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. What do you think a higher self is? I tell you what, do you, you know when you go to do something, I'm sure you do mine, <laughs> and you think, no, I shouldn't do that. Oh, you're like your you're con conscience. Yeah, exactly. Conscience. I believe that's what that is. It's our higher self talking to the lower self, which is us. But, but that's oh. my interpretation. I'm not, I'm not telling everyone that's what you've got to believe. I don't do that. I don't work that way. But that's what I believe. So your conscience is, could be your higher self. Yeah, our little, our little voice what tells us, yes. don't do that. That's not a good yeah. thing to mm. do. But then you go and do it anyway. <laughs> well, that's your lower self oh, talking yes, then, isn't it? I've got it? to behave myself in the wind, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> but that was fascinating. I mean, mm. I'd never heard of orbs or mm. known very much about them till, till, till you came really, here. Yeah. And so the filled orbs, what you said about the ones that are, are white. The white the, what, what does white see, I've, I've mean? Not, I've not read any books about it. I never had an interest in it. Mm. And I don't want to read books because that's just someone else's interpretation. Yeah. I'm not knocking anyone else. No. Because I haven't read the books anyway. Yeah. But my interpretation is that when I pick up a photograph of a solid white orb, it seems I've made a connection anyway. 
with that spirit. I can feel it. Oh. And when I feel it, the orbs turn out to be solid white. Or I've got another white intense orb, which is when I've asked my guide to come in to show himself. Oh. So that's, that's my belief. Right, so... But then you do get orbs with different colours. I, don't, I haven't picked up many of those, to be honest. Mm. But people have got their set agenda that purple means healing, um, you know, red is an earthly colour. Mm. But, but I don't go along with them because I believe you've got your own interpretation. Right, yes. Goodness. I'm so happy with what I believe. Yes, yes. I don't put my belief on others. If they agree with me, then fine. Perhaps yeah. your belief comes from your feelings as well because of... Well, it must do. Yeah. yeah my belief. But absolutely, yeah, I think absolutely fascinating. Yeah. But then you've got people saying, what a load of tosh, <laughs> you know. People can believe what they want. They can, as long as you believe in your heart and you're true to yourself, mm. then fine. Yeah. And have you helped a lot of people, do you think? Um, they have through me, yes. Mm. And, and I'm just happy to help. I'm happy to be that medium. Yeah. Is that how you see your mediumship working? Is that is that what you? What's yeah, your goal to get from it? Just to give people relief and comfort. That's all it is. Simple. Yeah. Well, and I think it must do. Mm. It must do. But I enjoy the work at the same time. I can't deny that. I wouldn't do it otherwise. Well, that's a good thing too. Yeah. So, are the churches full? The spiritual churches? Do they get quite full? Is there a lot of people? They that... seem to go in cycles, you know. Hmm. Um, I've known churches to be packed, then sometimes it's not. Um, some people got their own favourite medium. They like to go and watch as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Is that possible as well? Could it be that some people are more in tune? With you than others, yeah, or and I with can tell you what, mediums. there are some people I just can't connect with. Oh, but, really? Um, yeah, and, and you do find it, you know. And I, I might go to one church one week, I might, str I might actually struggle. You know. mm. Another week, or another church, or even that church a month or so later, mm. you know, I, I'll, I'll be a lot better. Right, so that is, that is possible then. You have to be on the right. You've got to wake up in the good <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> under the bed, maybe you know. Right. But yeah. Right. So it does happen. Right. So, so shall we move on? Let's now? move on. Let's move on to um, rescue work, which I think is fascinating. Now, I call rescue work exorcism. Mm. Well, you can. Is that do. correct? I mean, is that? Are we talking the same thing here? Yeah, we are. I mean, exorcism is. Um, yeah, the subject is someone being possessed by a demonic spirit or some not nice entity. Yes. Or a space, you know, in the surrounding. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the exorcisms I've seen documented on telly and what I also believe aren't necessarily someone being overtaken by demonic entities. Oh. I think a lot of these people have mental problems, you know. Right. And, or split personalities. Right. Um so I've never actually done an exorcism out of a, get a spirit out of a person. Right. What I have done is, and I find this difficult to talk about, but I will, I'll touch on it. Okay. I've had actually been a media, medium helping people, I hate saying get rid, but people in their home sometimes have visitors from the spirit world who come in. Right. Unwanted. They stay, or they visitors? Stay. They're not visitors, or, or, they're around, aren't they? Yeah, and they stay for a long time sometimes. Mm. And I get called in, and other people like me, it's not just mm. me, called in to help these spirits return home. Right. Right. Um, and I, I, we, I say we, my little circle, mm. we call it rescue work, because we are rescuing spirits to go home, because they don't belong here. The body's, you know, it's not their time, it's their time to go back. Why do they do it? Different Do you reasons. Know? Um, some, I mean, spirits all come in to visit us anyway, and that's absolutely fine. My dad comes say hello, your parents or oh. whatever. But these are people who cause a bit of annoyance. I mean, I know, I know friends, I know people who quite enjoy the company. Mm. 
but yeah. some they see it as company. Yeah, who stay a long time. Yeah, I've got. Yeah, but though I don't believe they should stay here. Though <laughs> I believe visit and go back. But for instance, I knew a woman who moved into a home, and the man who lived there previously wasn't too happy what how she decorated or what how she treated her family. So he come in and he caused a bit of um, no annoyance. Let's put it that way. Are you allowed to say in which way? Ab abusive, if you like. In, in what voices or voices, throwing teasing, things? Voices, teasing, yes, all that. And so I came in, and I just asked him to go home. So I, I made a link between him mm. and a link with my guides, and I just asked him to leave. And you see, some leave quite happily, and I talk to them like I'm talking to you, you know. Mm. And we, I, I open up in a certain way. I pray to God, and it's all in the name of Jesus, what I do. Oh, or that's all in good. the name of God. Yeah. Okay. And I explain things, have a little chat. Some chats are longer than others, mind you. Yeah. Do they talk to you? They can. Or do they talk through your guide? How does no. that work? It, it's directly to me. Mm. Right. Oh, all right. Um, but my guide, I mean, I don't know the technical ways, but my guide somehow is involved. Um, and some are quite happy to leave, but I've oh. had one cause quite a, you know, quite quite a stir. With In me. what way? Oh, he took the mickey out of me. And, and it's funny, we was in a small living room like this, the doors were shut, and I felt cold air. I was like in the middle of a hurricane. Really? It's, it's like something off a Hollywood movie. You know? Oh, good grief, <laughs> yes. And he was the, it scary? No, I'm never scared mm. because I've got such belief in God, such belief in my protection. Do you know what? I'm more scared of people on earth <laughs> than what they get up to. There's, right. no, there's no telling yes. what people get up to. No, you know? no, you're right. But, um, but when I go into that environment, I protect myself and the people I'm with. So mm. I know they can't hurt me. They can try, and this guy did. Did he? Yeah. Um, but... So I had to call upon the angels. I see, you see, a lot of people don't talk about this. And it could be saying, oh, I've got an ego and talk, but I'm telling you how it is. Yes, I know. And, so, and to let you're know, a very honest, straight person. Well, I can't see any other point. <laughs> no, no. Um, so, you, so you had to call for extra help? I had to call for extra help. And who do you call for? I called upon a couple of angels, believe it or not. Do you? Do you know a couple of angels? No, I don't. But that's where my faith comes into it. Right. My belief. Right. right? I know my guide. But I don't exactly know the angels, but I know they've been looked after. Right? Right. And as soon as they came in, off that person went. But like I said, some are quite happy to step into the light and go. They know it's for the best. Step into the light. Is well, that I, true? I, I, yeah, I call it the light. Yeah. Call it what you like. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've heard that term yeah. in films. The light. Call it love if you like. Mm. Oh. Step into the love. Because it's all done with the love. And I hold no, I hold no malice towards anyone who you know, puts up a bit of a resistance. Right. It's all done with love, oh. all in God's name, or whatever God you want to call it, you know. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Um, but, and, and, but why don't they want to go back? Because they feel attached. I mean, some don't want to leave their home. They think it's their home still, even though they've passed. Oh. And they don't want anyone else in the home, you know. Right. Jealousy, but they've got to learn that they're not that body anymore. They've got to learn... It's time to progress and go back to God or heaven, mm. whatever you want to call it. Um, so, so does that happen automatically? Do you know the process when you die? No, I, I don't. Well, I know you move on and I know there's different mm. grades or levels of consciousness. Mm. You know? But if you can ask me the technical stuff, no, I don't. No, I don't yeah. think that actually matters. No. Um, but people but are looked after, are oh, you, when you die? Oh, my goodness, yeah. You'll you yeah. return to your family if you want to. Hmm. If you didn't get on with your family here and you don't want to see them, then fine. Right. But you'll be taken care of, you'll be loved. And, and it's all about love. Oh, I believe so. It's oh. a love connection, you know? Right. Um, like when I work as a medium, it's mind to mind. Yeah. yeah. So, and, that, and that's the vibration we work on. And, and when I do mediumship work, my guides and those who've passed over come in with love, 
so I can pass that love vibration on oh. to those in the congregation. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's really a nice way of putting it. So, back to your rescue work, because I know you've had... Have you not finished on the rescue work? No, I haven't. Because I, th I think it's fascinating, don't you? Because yeah. I think it's really interesting. Mm. But um, as people that, that just get lost... Do you, do you know what I believe? That say you're passing a car accident or something, mm. you don't necessarily know you've passed on because it's happened so quick mm. that you don't realise you're out of the body. And those people need help as well sometimes, you know. So they're confused. Yeah. So well, I won't say totally, but mm. some must be. Yeah. And. Um, so so is it? It's spirits that you're rescuing. What about ghosts? Well, Are I think, they the I think, same I think thing? we touched on before, you know, mm. um, ghost is just an energy a person leaves behind. It's so just a mirage. Maybe there's a way of getting rid of that image mm. or that feeling, because you can pick up feelings from a ghost. It can leave a feeling, but you can't contact it and it can't contact you. Because right. it's just... Because it's just a left an image. It's left an impression. Right. If you say... It's purely right, an you know, impression. Yeah, it's purely an impression, a bit like an atmosphere. But a sphere entity is someone who's come back or don't realise it's time to go. So people like me just help them move on. Do you ever see them? Oh, yes. You can. Uh, yeah. Do you see them as a physical body or are they an orb? No, no, not an orb. Um, an orb is a thought, I believe. I, I, have, I have seen them, yes. Uh, sometimes I feel... And sometimes I hear, and I don't see them. Right. It all depends on the atmosphere and different intensity, you know. Yeah. But no, it's uh, fascin It's fascinating. It I must is. admit. It is fascinating. But I feel it, it needs to be done. But I mean, some Church of England or Catholic Church has priests or you know mm. people to do this. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not authorized to do it by anybody. No. A lot of us aren't. But we do it in love. Oh. And that's, that seems good enough. Yes, I think that's... Does, that, yeah. does love fight evil? Love overcomes evil. Or love overcomes the lack of the good. Let's what a lovely way. thought. Yeah. Have you ever come across evil? Mm, not what I call evil. I've come across people who lack love. A bit. Is that the alternative? That's what I like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really lovely way of putting it. I've also come across people who don't believe what I do, or don't, or don't believe what people like I do, spiritualist, mm. because it's you know it's not not their belief, and, mm. and I've been not just me, but a lot of us have been mocked, and I've got certain people who won't talk to me anymore. Why? I've been. I mean, just because of what? Just you because do. they they believe in Jesus, but then I believe in Jesus. Yeah. You know, in the Bible it says do not mix with mediums and it says a lot in the Bible. It's all open to interpretation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've met a vicar once who believes I've seen Jesus but doesn't believe what I do. She says it's impossible. Once you die, you go to God. But um, you're saying which something... Which is a contradiction. Mm. And I said, yes, but you're allowed to come back on the earth and visit your loved ones. And she said, no, you're not. Um, God doesn't allow you to do that. Well, what sort of God is it that doesn't allow that, you know? Mm. You've got free will. You've still got free will. I mean, yeah. I, I, mean I, d I don't want to be with a God who doesn't allow me to love my, you know, pay a visit and what have you. Right. M looking on my family, make sure they're safe. Yes. But they can't contact you. That's a shame. They'd have to find a medium like yourself. Yeah, to, um, to contact you. But some people are open, you know. Some people do are sensitive. Not necessarily mm. mediums. Mm. Like maybe you've experienced a feeling. Mm. Uh, yeah. some, there's something there. Yeah. It's just that mediums are more acutely aware than others. Yeah. We all come, we all come in different size and shapes, you know, with yeah. different qualities. And do you feel that they're directing your life? Something is. Yeah. Because I think I said to you, once before that I found everything around me, like my hobbies, my way of life, the way I work, the teaching I receive. I haven't had to look far at all. Um, so, no, I, I feel quite 
blessed if you want to call it blessed. Yeah. So everything's, but it's not until you look back on your life, like I keep diaries, you know, and I think, oh my goodness me, how did that happen? <laughs> then you find out you're on a path. Ah. And I'm sure you're on a path. You know? oh. I may not know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look back, you'll notice you're on a path. Right. So you f do you feel everybody is then, to a certain extent? I believe so. Yeah, I do, I do believe. But some of us know it, some of us don't. And right. And some have just gone right off the path, and they know it. Right. And it's up to them to get back on it. And that's when the, the higher self kicks in, get back on that path. Oh, right. So you're always being looked after to a certain extent. So yeah, nobody should feel alone. Yes, but you can't help feel alone, can you? Really? Right. I mean, once you pass, those who've passed are fine. It's us who left behind the, the suffering. Mm. Right. So. so they should come and see you. Yeah, come and see me. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or thousands of people like me, yes. you know, can help. Yeah. Well, just fascinating. But uh, how many rescue works do you do? Is it? Are we talking a lot, or are we no, talking not, just the odd one? We're, we're talking about. Talk, see, I find this even hard mm. to talk about. You know, oh, sorry. I, I've, I've done it with a group a couple of times with myself about half a dozen times. Right. So, so we haven't got an epidemic. But, um, no, but it they happens. Are, it, it does happen, Maureen. It does more happen. More than you think. Yes. More than people are aware, you know. Yes. But there is help out there if people need it. Yes. So oh, well, that's nice to know. So that's good to and, know. And maybe just a bit of advice, contact your spiritualist church right. if you need some help. Right. Yes, thank you. That, that, that's a good bit of advice. I'd just like to sort of finish mm. with another poem. Now, this is stunning. The picture that comes up, I can see it. See if you can see the image in this picture. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Oh, I can see it immediately. Now, yeah. Look at the top of that picture. No, I think we, we did cover this once before, but I've, this that, is a better image. Isn't this it? is a fantastic image. Can you see at the top? I saw it immediately. You showed it yeah. to me. It's it's Jesus. It's Jesus. If well, I'm glad you think so. I <laughs> do. No, I absolutely do. And this, the poem is, it's beautiful. So I'm, I'm just going to share this with you all. Jesus Christ appeared for me in my breath for all to see. I prayed and asked my Lord to come so he and I and we became one. Holy Spirit used my breath Jesus came, we survived death. Why did he show? Because I asked. A responsibility, I'm set a task. I feel that I must spread the word, but how on earth can I be heard? There are those who do perceive, many there are who can receive. Yet I've been scorned and I've been mocked, even by those who are his flock. Some criticise and say I'm wrong. They make fun of me, but I stay strong. Thank you, God, for coming to me, for showing yourself how I love thee. Oh, that's a lovely poem. I'm glad you I think so. really like that. You see, I, I didn't know whether to keep that photograph to myself or not, or to let people know, because it's a personal thing, you know. I asked Jesus to come to me. Then I met someone who said, Paul, you've got to show this. You've got to let people know. Yeah. So I'm indebted to you for allowing me to show this. I, I just think it's, it's your breath. Right, it's my breath, it, yeah. You just breathed. Yeah. It's your breath you see, and I, you caught it on camera. I caught some images before on camera and I've seen figures appear. And the ultimate figure to me is Jesus. So mm. I just went up my garden and I said, look, Jesus, would you please come to me? And I breathed out the word, the name of Jesus yeah. and took a photograph. Um... It's just amazing. And, and people say that's a coincidence. But you imagine how many times you breathe in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I actually asked him to show himself. Yeah, and that, he that, did. Uh, and you, 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 oh. you, you saw what you've seen. Yes, I have. Um, that's just amazing. Uh, Paul, this has just been fantastic. What a way to finish our show. And what a way to finish my interviews with you, Paul. They've just been utterly 
fascinating, Paul starts his own shows of Eternal Spirit as a presenter next week. And who, who's going to be your first guest? I'm interviewing a young group of people, four of them, and they're called Felix Toe Paranormal Investigations. Right. Oh. That's a mouthful, isn't yes, it? Yes, it got is. It out. You did that well. And, um, <laughs> now, they've set up a ghost hunting group, but I wanted to introduce them first because they're local, well, they're Felix Stowe, Paranormal mm. Investigations. I said, right, let's introduce you to the people of Felix Stowe and the wider audience. Yeah. So I think, well, I'm going to introduce them. And so in the future, they can go out, investigate, come back, and let us know how they get on. Yes. Wow. So they've intru- well, they're going to introduce themselves. Uh, we've looked into the wise and rare force, who they are, what's their background. And... Um, well, after we do that, then they'll come back again a couple of times. And show so we've their got results. to watch this space watch and this, see, watch see what space. you come up with. Indeed, yeah. Oh, Paul, it's been fascinating. And hopefully, I'd... they'll ask me to come along as well. Yeah, oh, I'm sure they will. <laughs> On a few yes. things. We never yes. know. You're our resident medium. Mm, thank you. Yes, it's just been fascinating. And thank you so much for, for sharing these shows with us. And I hope you've enjoyed them. Now, if you've got any questions for Paul, we're going to put up his um, contact email. Please feel free to contact him. And of course, if, you're in, if you would like to book Paul for any occasions, the same email applies. And uh, I hope you found this really interesting and I'd love to hear your questions. Thank you so much, Paul, well, for thank coming. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, and thank you for viewing. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.